Hello everyone, my name is Steve Power and I'm a solutions consultant here at Pegasus Software. Thank you for taking time to watch this video on making tax digital. I hope you find what I'm covering here both interesting and informative. Okay, let me go through what we'll be covering in this video on the implementation of making tax digital within Opera 3. Firstly, I'll take you through the process of signing up for Making Tax Digital with HMRC so you will see the sort of information that will be required by HMRC to allow you to sign up and use this new system. Then we'll look at how you will authorise your copy of Opera 3 so that you can access your VAT account on the HMRC site using the new HMRC API. I'll create a VAT return. If you need to make final adjustments to the figures on that VAT return, then let us have a look at how they can be amended to make them correct. If there are multiple companies within your group that have the same VAT registration number, then there will need to be only one VAT submission to HMRC. If some of those companies have their accounts within different accounting systems, then I'll show you how this can be achieved. Which means that they will not only need to be imported, but they'll also need to be consolidated together before they can be submitted to HMRC. So let me show you how VAT consolidation works within Opera 3. And finally, I'll show you how you can go through and submit that VAT return to HMRC. Before you can start using Making Tax Digital, you will need to sign up with HMRC. So let me take you through that process. You should only sign up for Making Tax Digital once you've submitted your final VAT return using the existing system and prior to submitting your next VAT return under these new MTD rules. First of all, go to the government website, gov.uk, and enter into their search engine, sign up for using Making Tax Digital. From that page, you will find a link that allows you to sign up your business to Making Tax Digital. Just bear in mind, the following screens may vary from what I show you next because HMRC might update them. The first question you'll be asked is, do you have accounting software for managing your VAT records? The answer is, yes, I have accounting software because you're using Opera 3. The next question you'll be asked is, is your software ready to submit your Making Tax Digital for VAT returns directly to HMRC? Again, the answer is yes, my software submits through Making Tax Digital for VAT because you are using Opera 3. And then press continue. Now you need to log into the Government Gateway using your existing Government Gateway user ID and password. This is the user ID and password you use to submit your VAT returns online. If you don't normally use the Government Gateway credentials to submit your VAT returns to HMRC, then you'll be asked for additional information, such as your VAT registration number, VAT registration date, and the business postcode, because from this information, they will be able to identify the relevant company that is signing up for Making Tax Digital. You'll then be asked, do you have more than one VAT registered business? If you have, then you'll be asked a few more questions to make sure the business details and the VAT registration numbers match. What type of company are you registered as? Sole trader, limited company or other? Select the correct option and press continue. Now, depending on which option you have selected, the next question will vary. For a sole trader, you'll be asked information such as date of birth and your national insurance number. In my example, we will sign up as a limited company, in which case you'll be asked for your company registration number and your corporation tax unique taxpayer reference number. Next, you will need to agree to get emails instead of letters. You have to agree to go paperless and receive emails about your VAT account to complete the sign-up process. They will send you emails when there are messages about VAT in your HMRC digital tax account. Obviously, you'll need to enter your email address. They will then send you an email. Click on the link in that email to verify that this is your correct email address. They will then confirm that this has been verified as your email address, at which point you can then select the continue to sign up option shown in green on this slide. And finally, they will send you the terms and conditions that you need to accept. That's it. You'll then be able to use MTD for that. HMRC will send you a confirmation email within 72 hours of signing up. Do not submit a VAT return until you receive that confirmation email. Remember, you should only sign up for Making Tax Digital once you've submitted your final VAT return using the existing system and prior to the end of the VAT quarter where you'll be submitting your next VAT return under these new MTD rules. OK, let's go into Opera 3 and turn on Making Tax Digital. In the Company Profiles form, 
there is an option to switch on MTD for VAT and to enter the start of the VAT period where MTD will apply. So let's tick on MTD for VAT and in my example let me go through and set the start date to be the 1st of April 2017. Let's save that away. And I get a message that states, now that Making Tax Digital has been switched on, you must authorise your Opera 3 software with HMRC using the MTD VAT Centre before you can use this service. OK, if I try and generate a new VAT return using the existing mechanism, it gives me a message and it tells me that I now need to use a new option called the MTD VAT Centre to generate the new MTD versions of the VAT return. This is the new MTD VAT Centre. The first thing I will need to do is to authorise this copy of Opera 3 to communicate with HMRC. Notice this message is telling me exactly that. Authorization needs to be completed with HMRC before the MTD VAT Centre can be used. Do you want to authorise your Opera 3 software now? And I could simply click yes to do so. Or if I say no, then it gives me a message at the bottom of the screen telling me that authorization has failed and to go into the Action Authorise option. Let's go through and do exactly that. This option takes us to this screen on the gov.uk website. Authority to interact with HMRC on your behalf. Notice it is saying that Opera 3 needs permission to interact with HMRC on your behalf and is asking us to grant authority for Opera 3 to communicate with your VAT account held by HMRC. If we go down and select the option to continue, then it asks us to go through and use our government gateway user ID and password to sign into our account. Let's do that. And let me enter my password. And if we select sign in, this takes us to this screen, authority to interact with HMRC on your behalf. This prompts us to specifically grant authority for your copy of Opera 3 to allow it to communicate with HMRC, to allow both the option to view your VAT records and to update those VAT records on the HMRC site with details of your new MTD VAT submissions. It also tells you that this authority will be valid for 18 months. Let's go through and grant authority. Once you grant authority, then in the background there is a communication process that grants a secure access for Opera 3 to interact with your VAT account on the HMRC site. Once you've done this, then that's it. Your Opera 3 system will be communicating with HMRC via the new MTD VAT API and we will be returned to the MTD VAT Centre in Opera 3. This process will need to be repeated in 18 months' time to allow you to renew this grant of authority. Once you have given authorization to HMRC, then you will see that these next submission from to due date will get populated along with the frequency of the VAT return. These are being retrieved directly from your HMRC VAT account, i.e. they are your obligations to HMRC and are being displayed within Opera 3. Here we can see the previous submissions and as we can see this one was created prior to us turning on MTD for VAT for this particular company. If we tick the previous submissions radio button we can see these committed values derived from the VAT data held in the sales, purchase and nominal ledgers and the submitted values sent through to HMRC. Remember these submitted values might be different because you might have taken the option to adjust the committed VAT data prior to submission through to HMRC. Off the action button you will find we brought together the VAT information into one place within the MTD VAT Centre. So this is where you will find all of your VAT reports. This is where you will go through and set up your VAT codes. Once you have authorised your system to communicate with HMRC, use this commit option to commit the VAT transactions to the VAT return for this VAT period. Adjust committed. 
This is used to amend the VAT return at the end of the VAT period after committing your VAT data. The tax point date used for adjustments to committed VAT is the final day in the VAT period. Remember, with MTD, you can no longer amend the nine boxes on the VAT return manually. You have to use this option to make any amendments because it will make a digital record of such adjustments. Adjust uncommitted. This is used to amend the VAT return before committing your VAT data. You can use any tax point date in the current VAT period when posting such adjustments. Submit to HMRC. This will allow the VAT return to be submitted from Opera 3 to HMRC via the new HMRC MTD VAT API. If I had the ECVAT module activated, then I would see a couple of other options. One of those would be for the ECVAT reports, and the second option would be for ECVAT maintenance to set up country codes, commodity codes, and so on. These are not shown here because I have specifically turned off the ECVAT module in this copy of Opera 3. OK, let's close down the MTD VAT Center. And let's go through and post an invoice to a supplier. I'm going to choose a EU supplier, bearing in mind that I don't have the ECVAT module activated. So here we have David Korn Company, based in France. So let's go through and post an invoice to David Korn. Invoice number. Purchase order number. And the value of... 600 euros. Let's analyze that goods value, save it away, and post it. Okay, let's go through and let's open up the MTD VAT Center. These figures on this to commit column are the current VAT return figures that have yet to be committed to the VAT return for the current period. Because I don't have the ECVAT module activated, then that purchase invoice I've just posted will have updated box seven, total value of purchases excluding VAT. However, as this was a purchase from an EU supplier, then it should have updated box nine, total value of acquisitions goods from EC excluding VAT. And because this is an EC acquisition, it should also have updated boxes two and four, tax value on acquisitions from EC and tax reclaimed on purchases. If I had the ECVAT module activated, then those postings would have been made automatically. But because I don't, then it has treated it as a home purchase. So how can I adjust the VAT return so that it will be correct? Remember, you cannot manually adjust the VAT return once MTT comes into force because there is no digital record of that adjustment. Those figures must be generated from the underlying digital VAT records held in the digital compatible software. That then begs the next question, how do I amend those figures? Let's go and have a look at the VAT codes option. We have added the ability to create new J-type VAT codes. The J-type VAT code can be used in the VAT adjustments forms and allows most boxes on the VAT return to be adjusted. I say most boxes because boxes 3 and 5 are calculated and therefore they can't be adjusted. These J-type VAT codes can only be used in the VAT adjustment forms to amend the values on the VAT return, i.e. to adjust either the committed VAT values or adjust the uncommitted VAT values. Here we have one of these J-type VAT codes. I've called this one MTD. ECVAT purchase adjust. In this example, we can see that it is going to adjust the box nine, total value of acquisitions EC, box two, tax value on acquisitions EC, and box four, tax reclaimed on purchases. Let me use this JTYPE VAT code to correct that purchase invoice I posted a moment ago. That invoice is currently uncommitted. So let's take this option here, adjust uncommitted. I'm going to go through and we're going to say that this is a purchase ledger adjust. It's for David Korn and its reference is invoice 73,000. What is the goods value? That's 500 pounds sterling. The VAT is 100. This is the acquisition tax VAT value. And I'm going to put a comment of 
invoice 73000 EC purchase adjust to the VAT return. And save it away. This has created a digital record of that adjustment. And here we can see box 9 has been adjusted by that £500 we've just posted. This new functionality will help those customers that do not need the EC VAT module but have occasional EC transactions that need to be accounted for on the VAT return. But of course, if you have many such transactions, then simply buy the EC VAT module and this will all be done automatically for you. Okay, let's go through and run the detailed VAT audit trail report. And let's run this report through to screen. And here we go, we can see that VAT adjust to that invoice for the £500 that I've just posted there. So we can see that there's now a digital record of that adjustment held within the system itself. OK, let us now have a look at some of the new functionality we've added into the MTD version of Opera 3. Some of our customers use group VAT accounting, whereby a number of their companies are connected together for VAT reporting. Essentially, they will have additional Opera 3 companies, all of which have the same VAT registration number. The question is, can the VAT data for these companies be consolidated together to allow for a single MTD VAT submission? Well. The answer is yes, this is possible within the MTD version of Opera 3. Let me log into a subsidiary company, Orion Vehicle Leasing Manchester, and let me go through to the Company Profiles option. Here we can see that we have an option to enter a consolidation company. This is the company where the VAT records will be consolidated into, i.e. if I enter a code here, you are saying that this is the subsidiary company for VAT. When you commit the VAT return in this subsidiary company, it will take those VAT figures and update the group stroke parent company. And it is from that parent company where the VAT return will be submitted. The system will check to make sure that the VAT registration number in the subsidiary company is the same and the submission of the VAT return from a subsidiary company will be disabled. If we log back into the parent company, Orion Vehicle Leasing Kettering, and we go into the MTD VAT Center, if we look under the summary item, we can see here are the nine boxes on the VAT return for the parent company. Here we can see the nine boxes on the VAT return for the subsidiary company. And we can also see the overall totals that will be submitted through to HMRC as a consolidated VAT return. Another area where we've enhanced the MTD version of Opera 3 is with the addition of the ability to import VAT returns from third-party products and to use Opera 3 to submit that VAT return through the MTD VAT API to HMRC. This forms part of the Opera 3 Advanced MTD product and is a chargeable option. Let's have a look at this. I had a question from a partner whereby a customer had an Opera 3 company and a second company that was using a different accounting system, but both were under the same VAT registration number. So they needed to send one VAT return covering both companies. How could this be achieved? What they are actually asking for is for Opera 3 to act as a bridging software between this third party product and HMRC. If we go to the action button, we have an option here to import VAT values. This option makes this possible. It will import the nine boxes on the VAT return and add those figures to the VAT return within Opera 3 ready for onward submission to HMRC. It's digital because the nine boxes imported come from the digital record held in the other accounting system. Let's have a look at this working. Let me hop across into my company B. If we go into the MTD VAT Center and have a look at this import VAT values option, let us assume that we've exported the nine boxes on the VAT return from that third party product as a CSV file. How would we digitally import that information into this Opera 3 company? Well, here we see we have the next submission VAT period, which is from the 1st of April to the 30th of June. And here we can go and select the file 
to be imported. In this case, I'm going to import this CSV file here, 2017 quarter two, April to June. Let's select this file and let's put a comment on it. Import fat return from Ryan V. Vehicle Leasing Manchester and say next. It confirms the figures that will be imported into this MTD VAT Centre. I take the option to import and it will produce an audit trail report of the figures that are being imported. Final confirmation, do I want to import these VAT figures? Yes I do. Once imported, we can see that the nine boxes on the VAT return have been populated as committed with those figures here. If we hop back into the parent company, Orion Vehicle Leasing Kettering, and if we go into the MTD VAT Centre, if we now look at the summary option, here we can see those figures that have been imported from that third party product and they appear here, both at an individual company level, but also consolidated together for the totals for this particular VAT return. If we scroll over to the right, we can see an audit of the date and time when that VAT return was imported, but also who did that VAT import. And if we look at the main MTD VAT center, here are the two columns. The to commit column shows the values on the nine boxes of the VAT return for the parent company. And the all companies column shows the values on the nine boxes of the VAT return for both the parent company and the subsidiary companies that are listed over here under this subsidiary companies table. Remember what we could have is we could have multiple subsidiary companies feeding into the parent company for a group VAT submission. Okay, now let's commit the figures for this parent company and then submit the consolidated VAT return through to HMRC. So again, off the action button, I'm taking the option here to commit. Confirms the VAT period start and end dates and allows me to go through and produce the audit trail report. And if we go to the second page, here we can see the committed figures for this parent company. And here I can see the group committed figures within the parent company. If I needed to adjust these committed figures for this parent company for some reason, then I can take this option here to adjust committed. This would allow me to use those J-type codes to adjust the figures to make them correct for this particular VAT return. However, if I discovered issues with those figures on the imported VAT return, then I should adjust them in the third party product and re-export them and import them back into the subsidiary OPERA 3 company. This is because the digital records for those transactions need to be maintained in that third party product. Okay, let's assume that there is an issue with the VAT figures for this parent company and I want to adjust them to make them correct. Let me show by example, let's say that my accountant identified a VAT rounding error for a specific invoice that was submitted on my previous VAT return and they want me to correct them on this next VAT return. As before, we can go into the VAT codes and here I have a VAT code that allows me to go through and adjust the sales VAT figures. Adjusting box one, tax value on sales. Okay, let's therefore go through and take the option to adjust committed. It's a sales ledger. It's for Adams Light Engineering. And the reference is going to be INV1000 adjust. I'm going to select the VAT code as sales VAT adjust. And I'm going to say the VAT value to adjust was two pounds. And in my comment, I'm going to say invoice 1000, rounding issue submitted on the last VAT return. And say okay. And here we can see the system is telling us that there is a
committed VAT adjust. And it's highlighting that on box one on the VAT return. And we can see there is a £2 difference between those two figures there from the committed to what will be the submitted. So we can see how we can use these new J-type VAT codes to simply adjust the VAT value in box one, tax value on sales. And in parallel with that, I guess that you'd post a non-VAT journal to the VAT output control account to bring it into balance. And this is important because these J-type VAT codes adjustments do not make any nominal postings. In which case, once you've adjusted the VAT return, then you should make a parallel nominal posting to make the values in the nominal ledger match the figures that are on the VAT return. Okay, I am now happy that these figures on this VAT return are now all correct, and I'm ready to submit them to HMRC via their MTD VAT API. So, let's go into the action button and take the option to submit to HMRC. I get the normal warnings about legal declarations. I'm happy with that. And now I can see that it's telling me the VAT return was successfully submitted to HMRC. And that's it. The VAT return is now marked as previous. And that's the VAT return submitted through to HMRC. Here we can see the committed figures for the previous submission. And these were the ones that were created from the underlying VAT records. Here we can see the submitted figures that were sent through to HMRC. And these are the ones that are maybe different because we did various adjustments to them. And here we can see under the previous submissions, we can see that VAT return. What was its date from due for which period and when was it actually submitted through to HMRC? I can look at the date stamped HMRC receipt to confirm that this has been received by HMRC. So if we view the HMRC receipt, we can see the date and time stamp of that submission. This option is available in Opera 3 version 260.10 and onwards. When we next come back to the MTD VAT Centre, we will see that these next submission is for VAT period. These dates will be updated with the dates for the next VAT quarter. I suspect this may not affect many of you, but just be aware, if you attempt to submit a VAT return before the end of the VAT quarter, then it will get rejected and you'll get a message for that rejection. Okay, that concludes the software demonstration part of this presentation. Okay, to conclude, the Making Tax Digital legislation states that VAT registered businesses with a taxable turnover above the VAT threshold are mandated to keep digital VAT records. HMRC believe that improved accuracy will be provided by businesses if they maintain digital records of their sales and their purchases, i.e. using MTD-compatible software to store and process that information. And they extend that vision by saying that those digital records will be used to create and send VAT returns directly to HMRC. And because they will be sent digitally, they believe that this will avoid transposition errors where information is manually entered onto the HMRC site, which would therefore reduce the amount of tax loss to those avoidable errors. As we've just seen, Opera 3 covers all of the requirements for functional compatible software as defined by HMRC. It allows you to authorise your copy of Opera 3 to communicate with your VAT account held on the HMRC site. It allows you to consolidate VAT returns across multiple companies. And it also allows you to submit that VAT return to HMRC using the MTD VAT API. And using the advanced MTD version, it will allow you to use Opera 3 as bridging software that will allow you to submit VAT returns from a third-party software product through to HMRC. For further information, then go onto the Pegasus website, pegasus.co.uk. On the software tab, there is a Making Tax Digital option. From there, you will find an introductory video that gives you a concise overview of what Making Tax Digital is all about. There is also an overview of MTD. This is a link to the government website and gives you a detailed overview of MTD, together with the main messages that HMRC are pushing about MTD, including short video overviews on a range of different aspects of MTD. There's also a couple of other links to the government website. One covers the VAT notice for MTD. This includes examples of digital links between accounting software and spreadsheets, which is quite useful. And a second takes you to the HMRC consultations that provides a whole host of useful information. I would recommend that periodically you come back to this page on the Pegasus website because we will be updating it frequently with new information as it comes to hand. 
On the Pegasus Help Center, there are a number of documents designed to help you. We've created an MTD for VAT checklist guide. This guide will take you through the whole of the process of setting up your system to operate under MTD VAT. What are the prerequisites? Then it will take you through the options to activate your account for MTD on the HMRC website. Authorization to allow Opera 3 to communicate with that account. And next, the sequence you'll need to go through to set up Opera 3 to be MTD enabled. And finally, submitting that VAT return through to HMRC. So a complete guide to implementing MTD in Opera 3. The checklist guide also includes a simple flow diagram that covers the entire process, worth looking at before you start this journey into MTD. And of course, you can go onto the government website, www.gov.uk, and search for Making Tax Digital for VAT. This will take you to this web page that has a vast number of results all around the subject of Making Tax Digital. However, the top ones are already those that are on the MTD page on the Pegasus website. And finally, if you have a specific question that you can't find the answer to, then have a chat with your partner. As always, your partner is there to help you. So talk to them about installing, activating and implementing MTD for VAT. OK, that covers what I wanted to say about MTD. So I hope you found this video both useful and informative. Thank you very much.